Bamboo Labs is still running their Black Friday sale on the, well, pretty much everything they got in the catalog printers. But specifically, I want to talk about the A1 Mini. So I released a video previously about the A1 Mini being on sale for the Black Friday. It looks like they're going to do about a month long Black Friday going from, I don't know, mid October all the way through November at some point in time, end of November. And I would guess that they're doing it so they don't get overwhelmed in the shipping department, kind of give people a window to buy things at a discount. And I ended up picking an A1 Mini up for myself specifically to have at my house. And it's like 200 bucks. I want to say I got free shipping as well. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. You let me know in the comments if, uh, if they're running that too still. And I didn't want to talk about really the nitty gritty about it until I ran it. But I've been running it this past week and I want to talk about that one. So as compared to the other bamboos that I have, the X1 Carbon and the X1 Engineering version, it doesn't quite have as good of a tune out of the box using Orca Slicer is what I've noticed. So, and it could be the fact that I'm running PETG that has not been uh, de-watered or whatever it is in a while. I, I haven't thrown it into a dry box. So it could be that my filament is getting a little bit of moisture in it or something like that. And that's why I'm getting stringing, but I've been running the same stuff on these and I don't get any stringing at all. So I think it's actually the settings that come with that one. Or it could be the actual machine. I have seen reports that the A1 doesn't quite print as well as the other ones. And truly, it's a, it's a single beam machine. It's not uh, Core XY or Core C or whatever people call them, where on the Core XY, on the bigger box machines, I'll keep pointing over here because they're, they're hiding, the entire build plate moves up and down and then the head moves on a gantry left and right. So it's supported on both sides, right? Whereas the A1 Mini, it's got a beam that hangs off. So we've got a single post that goes up and then we have a single beam that goes over and then we've got our print head that sits out here. So the beam goes up and down and then the head moves on the beam itself and then it's a bed slinger. So the, the bed's actually moving forwards and backwards in what is it, the Y direction? I forget which one it is, doesn't really matter. So you're gonna have some artifacts based on that. There's a lot more momentum kind of going back and forth. You have to, you, you wanna tune your parts or turn your parts so that the long ways aren't doing this. You want the long ways to be in the way where your shorter sections are going up and down when the bed's moving. So there's some considerations for that, but for $200, this is by far the best $200 printer that I bought. I will say that it's ultra quiet. It is really fast. Even with the stock settings on Orca Slicer, I've been having no problems, although I should probably double check them. I do believe I slowed down. I'll have to see which one, but for PETG, you know, 15 millimeters cube per second ejection is I think what it comes with stock on the PETG settings and it's too fast, uh, going down to 10 or 7.5 or even 5.5 or, or 2.5, depending on what I'm printing, is what I've done to get better output on there. So, you know, if you're printing stuff like this, you know, shelf hangers or whatever, or what I've been printing at the house is stuff that uh, is really cool and I can't even tell you about it because it's, um, well, I can't even tell you why I can't tell you about it, but it's been really useful parts for the house that are going along with other parts that I have in the house and it is helping me do things that I couldn't do without a 3D printer. I guess that's really all that I can tell you about because it's it's special things that I'm designing for myself and printing for myself for the house that is serving very unique utility for me. And I'm not going to show you what it is because I can't um, for various reasons, lots of reasons. Just you gotta trust me, bro. You gotta trust me on this, but it's been super handy to have. And I could have done this at the shop and I could have printed the parts, but it was something that I needed a bunch of iterations on and the parts that I need to print to mate to are at my house. So there really wasn't any better way to do it than to either pull a printer to my house, which is a bummer because then I got to pull it back to the shop or to have one just at the house that's ready. And this would be nice for the kids because if they want to design something now, they can just bang it out. I have a computer at home that always has CAD on it, always has the cam for the printer as well. So we can just spit out little parts, I don't know, toys, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but the kids will be able to start interacting with printers again because when I used to have printers at home, they were too young and now they're not and I can have printers at the home again because I say so. Now, 
I will say having a printer in the house, there is a risk of it. There's a lot of particulate matter that gets into the air. Even if you're printing PETG or PLA, there's still a really high particulate load that gets off gassed by these it's plastic floating in the air and breathing in plastic is not good for you. So I have it in a space in the house that has a high airflow or I'm gonna have it in a space that has a fan that's you know uh, filtering or whatever with some HEPA filters. And this could be a box fan with a 20 by 20 HEPA just taped to the front. It actually works extremely well for getting particulates out of the air. So that's what I've been doing and also opening up windows when the weather is at least nice. So just something to be aware of when you have printers running in your house. I do not recommend that you have them enclosed into a room. You're gonna get a lot of plastic that is just in the air and you don't need to be breathing that because it's bad for your health. It's bad for your endocrine system. And I mean, we're surrounded by plastics anyway, so anything we can do to reduce the load of plastic exposure is always a good thing in my opinion. So uh, to cut it short here, I really dig this printer. It seems to have extremely good quality for the price. I really do like that there's linear rails on there because I have worn out a lot of uh, what would be called V channel and roller systems or whatever, like all the old Creality stuff that wears out really fast. It takes a lot of fiddling to get those tight, but not too tight. And they wear out when you get them tight enough. They, they just wear grooves into those wheels and it's, it's you know, long-term, it's not great. But these, at the price that they are, I couldn't help it. And I think if you're looking for a printer, and especially if you don't need a large format printer, if you need something that is relatively small, you know, I, I could probably turn this and fit it on the bed or maybe shrink it down just a, a hair to fit it on the bed. I would have to measure I, th I think it'd be okay actually now that i'm looking it'd be it'd be close but i mean there's a lot of smaller parts you could do two sections or you know whatever there's tons of ways to get around that so if you're looking for one i think i can recommend this one highly at this point even though i've only got i don't know maybe 100 hours on it printing so far it has done extremely well i've been very pleased with the output so there you go if you have experience with this one leave it down below because a lot of other people might be using this input to judge whether or not they're going to buy it. So the more people that we can have getting their input into the comments, the better. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.